Hello everybody, I am from Mizu Study and in this session we are again discussing some important question from Need Biology and in this session we are going to take the chapter Anatomy of Flowering Plant. Let's begin the session with the questions one by one. Let's start the first question from Anatomy of Flowering Plants. The first question is the length of different internodes in a culm of sugar cane is variable because of here are four options option a is size of leaf lamina at the nodes below each internode b intercalary meristem c shoot apical meristem and d position of axillary buds when we discuss about the culm of sugar cane to find out the solution for the question or understand about the aspect, we first discuss about the internode. Internode is a part of stem. Part of stems that occur between between two adjacent. two adjacent nodes that are present between two adjacent nodes. Now, there is a peculiar type of meristem known as a intercalary meristem. Intercalary meristems are internodal Internodal in position, internodal in position, and these type of internodal meristem and intercalary meristems are found in are found in stem of grasses, stem of grasses, and and monocotyledonous plants monocotyledonous plants when we discuss about the intercalary always remember they present in the monocots not in the dicots when we discuss about the early stages of internode early stages of internode they are they are wholly or partially they are wholly or partially including the meristematic tissues but later on in the early stages they involve the meristematic tissue but on later part but on later they become mature they become matured more rapidly more rapidly because of the meristematic tissue present at the tip more rapidly than the rest of the part of stem so they show the rapidly growth of their development and in this sequence more rapidly than other part of the stem so a so a continuous so a continuous sequence of development so a continuous sequence of development is maintained when we discuss about the internode and the node perspective especially in the sugarcane cone that is intercalary 
that is sort of intercalary meri steps in which there is two stages early stages and in the later stages in later stages that is mature tissue mature tissue left behind left behind whereas whereas new ones grows which later shows variable length variable length as discussed in the prior part that they possess two types of tissues especially in the intercalary tissues intercalary meristems there is a presence of in early stages in early stages presence of meristematic tissues present at the tip of the internodes and internode is a part for example these two straight lines are nodes these are act as a nodes in center there is a presence of internodes there is a presence of internodes and in later stage they show rapid growth they show the rapid growth so intercalary meristem is the right answer in the question with the help of which we generally discuss about the variable internodes because of the changing of state of the meristematic tissue at the mature and the later stage so option b that is intercalary meristem is the right answer in this case so student let's move on to the next question next question is in the sieve elements which one of the following is most likely function of p protein we just here to define out the function of p protein options are a includes deposition of cellulose on sieve plates b providing energy for active translocation C autolytic enzymes and D is sealing mechanism on wound. When we discuss about when we discuss about the sieve elements. Now, first of all, we understand what is sieve elements. Sieve elements are component of phloem tissue. Sieve elements are component of phloem tissues, and these phloem tissue are help in conduction of conduction of food in plants. They help in the conduction of food in plants. When we discuss about the sieve tubes tube element has peripheral layer of cytoplasm that surrounds it periphery layer of cytoplasm and these kinds of cells are present without any nucleus there is a absence of nucleus in the case of sieve tubes but there is a presence of periphery position shape of cytoplasm in this outside there in the form of periphery there is a presence of cytoplasm and in the central part is occupied by network of canals 
network of canals these canals contain fibrils of pea protein we we'll just take a quick uh, reback that is sieve tubes are the component of phloem tubes and they help in conduction of food in plants in tube there is a position for example like this outside circular is a cytoplasm and inner hollow is a spike like structure that is formed by the pea protein that is formed by the p protein now what is the role of p protein protein is believed to protein is believed to participate participate or actively participate in the in the transport of transport of nutrients they generally help in the transport of nutrients because they help in providing the transportation of food in plants apart for transferring of nutrients one more property is that sieve tubes will possess their general property is ability to form ability to form a gel now what is the role of these gel they help to puncture repair substances puncture repair substances forming a forming a plug these plugs developed at the site of damage in sieve elements apart for they providing the medium of transferring transferring of food or nutrients they also help to repair the substances by forming a gel and act as a plug at the site site of damage in the sieve elements in this manner they prevent they prevent loss of food loss of food materials being being translocated translocated by the phloem they generally prevent the by plugging the site of damage at the sieve tube they prevent the loss of food material that being translocated by the phloem so to maintain the proper functioning of the phloem and the sieve elements they also act like act as like the gel to act as a plug so it is believed that sealing functions these uh, plugging act as a sealing functions on wounding so these gelling substance that the sieve tube will secrete at the in the form of plug at the site of damage they also act as a sealing function of answer is sealing function on wounds a part of that they providing in help in the transferring of food from um, or in plants they also help in the sealing mechanism of wounding so in this question the option d that mention the sealing mechanism of wounding is the right one in this case let's move on to the next question 
the next question from anatomy of flowering plants is which of the following is a non nucleated living plant cell option a vessel b c tube c tracheid and d all of these when we discuss about non nucleated living plants as in the prior question we just discuss about the little about the sieve tubes sieve tubes are elongated elongated tubular conducting channels now in the conducting channels they can conduct the food materials within the plants conducting channels of phloem tissue we all know that plant in categorized as a in vascular bundles and vascular bundles involves two parts name as a phloem phloem and the xylem xylem is role playing in conducting channels for water and the mineral and nutrient substances and phloem whereas play role in conducting the food items within the plants next is sieve tube has sieve tubes has periphery layer of cytoplasm cytoplasm and these layer are present without nucleus each sieve tube each sieve tube is formed of several cells called sieve tube sieve tubes and these sieve tube elements are also known as sieve elements now when we consider about sieve tubes and sieve cells it includes three things that is periphery cytoplasm next is they are present and occur without nucleus and third one is in this the presence of sieve elements that combine to form the sieve cells and these sieve cells combine to form the sieve tube so according to the discussion the answer of the question is non nucleated uh, cell is sieve tubes so according to the discussion the right answer for this is option b that includes sieve tubes in which there is a presence of periphery cytoplasm there is a absence of nucleus and it includes sieve elements which form sieve cells and sieve cells unite to form the sieve tubes so move on to the next question the next one is the girth or diameter of stem increases due to the activity of a apical meristems b intercalary meristems c lateral meristems and d none of the above when we discuss about the girth and diameter basically the apical meristem to answer the question first we we'll discuss about the apical meristems apical meristems are the meristematic tissue that are present at the tip of stems and roots stems and root so after bridging at the tip 
दे टेक पार्ट इन इनिशियल ग्रोथ इनिशियल ग्रोथ और इलोंगेशन ऑफ रूट्स इलोंगेशन ऑफ रूट्स एंड स्टेम्स बायब्रेजिंग एट द टिप ऑफ स्टेम एंड रूट्स दे प्ले इम्पॉर्टेंट रोल इन इनिशियल ग्रोथ एंड इलोंगेशन ऑफ रूट एंड स्टेम इंटर कैलरी मेरी स्टेम्स इंटर कैलरी मेरी स्टेम्स लाइक इन द ऑप्शन ने सेकेंड इंटर कैलरी मेरी स्टेम अकर्स एट द लीफ बेस दे आर अकर एट द लीफ बेसिस एंड अबव एंड अबव एंड बिलो द नोट्स they are present above and below the nodes like we discuss in the sugarcane culm for example in the grass mint sugarcane etc these intercalary meristems help in these intercalary meristems help in elongation of help in elongation of leaves help in elongation of leaves and internodes and internodes along allow the prostrate stem prostrate stem become erect become erect the next stem and the last given in the option is lateral meristems lateral meristems occurs on these generally presents on sides sides and help in help in girth or diameter basically that is focused for increase in girth and diameter of the stem example is vascular cambium vascular cambium and cork of cambium and cork of cambium so according to the discussion the answer for the question is the answer of the question is lateral meristem why lateral meristem because when we discuss about the apical they present at the tip of stem and root only so they play a important role in elongation but our question is asking about to increase the girth and diameter of a stem the next meristem present in options are is intercalary meristem that occurs at the leaf bases and present above and below the nodes and they play important role for example in elongation even in grass mint in sugar cane and along the growth of internodes so the last one is the lateral meristem that occur at or present at the sides of the stem and help in increase the girth and diameter for example in vascular cambium so according to the discussion the right answer for the question is option c that is lateral meristem is the right one in this case so let's move to the next question 
the next question from anatomy of flowering plant is interfesicular cambium is a option a primary meristematic tissue b primordial meristem c type of protoderm and d secondary meristematic tissues when we discuss about interfesicular cambium the meristems the meristems originate originate from the meristem originate from permanent cells permanent cells and these permanent cells is also known as a secondary meristems is also known as a secondary meristems and these meristem when we discuss about their origin they are not or they do not originate from embryonic stage embryonic stage they do not arise from embryonic stage so they develop on they develop at later stage after the embryonic stage they are usually lateral in position lateral in position they also are lateral in position so interfesicular cambium so interfesicular cambium and the coc cambium are the example of secondary meristem secondary meristems when we discuss about the meristems basically meristems are permanent cells that arise from the secondary meristems and they are not arise from the embryonic stage they develop at the later stage after the embryonic one and they are lateral in position when we see about the central position periphery position in such kind of a position they are present in the lateral position and in both interfesicular cambium and co cambium they are act as a secondary meristem so answer is the secondary meristem in this question let's tick the right one interfesicular cambium is a option d that is secondary meristem matic tissue let's move on to the next question the next question is balloon like protrusion of pen parenchyma cells into the lumen of vessels is known as option a tunica b tylosis c phallogen and d histogen this is a very important question come in the pmt 2009 certain plants when we discuss about the productions in plants so then we discuss about the certain plants in which xylem parenchyma in which xylem parenchyma cells develop develop balloon like balloon like protrusions balloon like protrusions and these protrusions are present into adjacent 
adjacent xylem vessels xylem vessels and these adjacent xylem vessels is also known as tylosis also known as a tylosis what is the rule in the presence of tylosis the tracheids and vessels of vessels of heart would get plugged get plugged by the presence of such ingrowths such ingrowths in between so when we discuss about the xylem parenchyma the development of balloon like protrusions in the xylem vessels xylem vessels are focused for the conduction of water and nutrient or minerals in the plants and when they are blocking in production such kind of uh, xylem vessels by developing balloon shaped protrusions they are by the tylosis by the presence of tylosis and by the presence of tylosis the tracheids and vessels of heart would get plugged by such in growths so the right answer for balloon like protrusion present in the cell is because of tylosis tylosis is the right answer in this case students let's take the right one in the option so option b that the tylosis is the right one for the presence of balloon like protrusions of parenchyma cell let's discuss the next question from anatomy of flowering plants next question is in vascular bundle a strip of vascular cambium is present in between the xylem and phloem option a open b closed c in dark d exact when we discuss about the vascular bundles we all know vascular bundles includes both xylem and phloem both xylem and phloem together at the same radius at the same radius that's why also known as a conjoint conjoint collateral also known as a co-joint collateral vascular bundles when we discuss about in the gymnosperms gymnosperms or dicot stems in the dicotyledons and in the gymnosperms a strip of a strip of vascular cambium a strip of vascular cambium occur between phloem and xylem in gymnosperms and dicots there is a occurrence in presence of a strip of vascular cambium that occur between the phloem and xylem and this is also known as intrafascicular intrafascicular cambium intrafascicular cambium is the cambium that present like the in the strip form of vascular cambium that is present between the phloem and xylem when we discuss about the strip of these strip produce in later stage the 
secondary tissues in later stage they helps to give rise the secondary tissues and such tissues and vascular bundles are described as open vascular bundles open vascular bundles this is all about the monocots but what is the condition in monocots in monocotyledon stem vascular cambium vascular cambium do not have do not have a strip of vascular cambium between them and they are also known as a closed vascular bundle closed vascular bundle so on that there is again a difference between monocots and dicots in dicot stem there is a presence of open type of vascular bundle and in monocots there is a closed type of vascular bundle so according to the question that is asking about in dicots and in the gymnosperm what kind of vascular bundle are present so according to discussion we go to know that it is of open type so let's take the right one that is option a that is open in open vascular bundle a strip of vascular cambium is present in between xylem and phloem and that is present in the gymnosperms and dicot let's move on and discuss the next question that is in grasses certain adaxial epidermal cells along the veins modify themselves into large empty colorless cells called a bully form cells c b companion cells c guard cells and d subsidiary cells when we discuss about the different kinds of a cell in grasses only we discuss with the grasses in grasses adaxial epidermis adaxial epidermis contain the large thin walled large thin walled protruding protruding and turgid cells and turgid cells and that cells presents over the over the reason of veins over the reasons of veins and the presence of these large thin walled protruding and turgid cells are also known as known as bully form or motor cells now what is bully form and motor cells these are the cells that are large in shape and thin walled protruding and including the turgid shape and they are present over the regions of veins these bully form and motor cells are highly highly vacuolate they are highly vacuolated and store water also help to store water if available in case of deficiency of water when some plants facing deficiency of water for example in xerophytes that are grown in the deserts area 
the deficiency of water if the plant faces deficiency of water then first of all these bully form cell these bully form cells these bully form cells lose water first of all they lose and reduce the water and because of the turgid shape they convert into the flaccid shape and due to which the conversion of turgid to the flaccid shape leaf get rolled up leaf get rolled up to reduce to reduce surface why leaf are opting that because in the reduction of rate of transpiration transpiration is loss of water so plant also save that so the bully, bully form cells in the motor cells are very important and useful for unrolling of leaf unrolling of leaf during the development so the right answer is that is bully form cells because they also help in unrolling of leaves unrolling of leaves as we discussed in the discussion unrolling of leaves so the right answer for the question is option a that is bully form cells is the right one in this case let's move to the next question students next is question number nine from the anatomy of here is the question number nine from anatomy of flowering plants that is which of the following is not a part of epidermal tissue system option a companion cell b trichomes c root hair and d guard cells when we discuss about the epidermal tissue system that is the epidermal tissue system in this epidermal tissue system epidermis derived from protoderm it derived from the protoderm and associated structure with this protoderm is also known as a epidermal epidermal outgrowths the epidermal tissue system includes epidermis and these epidermis arise from the protoderm and protoderm is surrounded by the various epidermal growths in this epidermal growths the stomata are present so stomata are arise from the epidermal tissues but now what is stomata stomata are the minute pores that occur on epidermal surface that occur on epidermal surface of leaves basically and some kind of apart for the leaves they are also occur in herbaceous some kind of herbaceous stems herbaceous stems when we discuss about stoma and stomata now each stoma is bounded by two specialized two specialized kidney shaped kidney shaped epidermal cells epidermal cells and these epidermal cell is also known as guard cells
guard sales now guard sales now these guard sales are again surrounded by other specialized other specialized epidermal cells epidermal cells and these cells are also known as these cells are also known as subsidiary subsidiary or accessory cells subsidiary and accessory cells for epidermis varies in multicellular and unicellular organisms epidermis vary in multicellular and unicellular organism multicellular and unicellular organisms these outgrowth of multicellular and unicellular will decide the plant parts and these plant parts are also known as a uh, trichomes this is also known as trichomes in roots basically in roots the presence of tubular unicellular tubular unicellular unbranched unbranched outgrowth are known as root hairs root hairs root hairs generally provide a medium which increase the surface area specially focused for the absorption of water from the capillary layers now the next is the companion cells next option is of companion cells companion cells are also part of phloem tissues and these phloem tissues and companion cell a part of vascular tissue system vascular tissue system these are not of these are not a part of epidermal epidermal tissue system so when we discuss about the companion cell that is a part of vascular tissue system not of epidermal tissue system but when we discuss about in the question that the stoma the guard cells all these are the epidermal origin and our question is again asking which is not a part of epidermal tissues so root hairs trichomes and guard cells all three are the epidermal origin and also come under the epidermal tissues so only companion cell is the option which derived from the vascular bundle tissues not from the epidermal so option a is the right one in this case let's move to the last question of anatomy of flowering plant that is the protective tissue in the plant body consist of option e xylem phloem and cambium b epidermis cork and bark c sclerenchyma chlorenchyma and collenchyma d all of these when we discuss about when we discuss about even cells of epidermis 
coke and bark when we consider all these all these three are thickened in shape thicken in shape but out of three coke and bark are maybe of dead tissues dead tissues so they mainly focused for the protection purpose they generally give the protection and protective to the cell when we discuss about the prosenchyma prosenchyma colenchyma and sclerenchyma now we'll take these three prosenchyma colenchyma and sclerenchyma all three are simple tissues all three are simple tissues but whereas chlorenchyma chlorenchyma where act as a chlorenchyma is a photosynthetic photosynthetic tissue when we discuss about the four tissue name as a prosenchyma colenchyma and sclerenchyma all three are the simple tissue where chlorenchyma are known as a photosynthetic tissue whereas colenchyma and sclerenchyma colenchyma and sclerenchyma a part of presence of the simple tissues they also sub act as a supporting tissues of plant supporting tissue of plant in this xylem and phloem in this xylem and phloem are the complex tissues complex tissue in which xylem and phloem both act as a complex tissue in which xylem is focused for conducting water and minerals water and minerals in the plant where phloem is responsible for the or act as a food conducting and transporting tissues so after discussing the xylem and phloem come under the vascular tissue and vascular cambium vascular cambium or cambium is the lateral meristems lateral meristems that responsible for growth or increase in girth of girth or diameter of stem and roots stem and roots they generally focus for increasing the girth of stem and roots so cambium is focused for the lateral or act as a lateral meristem where xylem and phloem a part of vascular bundle where xylem is focused for transferring of water and minerals and phloem is focused for food conducting tissue so according to the discussion option b that is epidermis cork and bark is the right one which act as a protective tissue as we discuss here these cork and bark are dead tissues they generally give the protective medium to the pl plant and act as a protective organs so epidermis cork and bark is the right answer in this case students 
so student this is all about the today's session of anatomy of flowering plants stay tuned with the meso study for the next session from neat biology till then stay safe stay home thank you very much